Hey folks, Sammy here. How's everybody doing today? Uh, I've seen better nights, that's for sure. Had a really long night last night. But uh, it actually is going to turn out well, I think. I'm hoping. I've kind of got like, don't mind the head on me. Like I say, I've been awake all night. Um, it's way too bright. No, I'm not hungover. I've just been doing mom things, you know, with, with my animals. Um, here's, here's how it went. <laughs> First off, People are scuzzballs, okay? Absolute low-life pieces of... Yeah. And this is why. This is the story why. At about 20 after 11 last night, um, we got hit... Well, we got hit with our first snowstorm. Let me start there. We got hit with our first snowstorm yesterday, and I, I'm obviously not ready for it. But the temperature dropped. It was snowing, and we got quite a bit of snow. And then... Uh... <sighs> I don't even know where to begin. I went to let my grandma kitten, that's granny, that's princess kitten, she's like eight years old. I went to let her in from the garage and the woodshed because she, you know, she likes to go out there and she still tries to hunt, but she's getting old, right? So she's not allowed to go wandering around the yard, you know, so we let her hunt in there and, and she goes out and she comes back in much happier and whatnot. So anyways, I went to go let her in, and uh, Dooley here, my little troublemaker, and Rar Rar, my big black one, my other boy. Ouch, don't bite! <laughs> he still bites. <laughs> but uh, I went to let Grandma Kitten in, and they were inside the house, and, you know, I heard meowing and while I was out in the garage, and I was like, well, what's going on? So I'm like, you know, normal mom things, hey, knock it off, cut it out, right, love each other. And, well, Grandma Kitten, she didn't want to come in right away. She went to the man door, and she kept sticking her nose down to the bottom of the door. So I was like, well, come on, baby, it's getting cold out here. you got to come in. So I let her in, and uh, then I could still hear the meowing. And I thought, okay, it's those stray cats. Because we've had quite a few, if you've seen, you know, other videos on my channel. We've had a lot of different strays come in. I got, you know, raccoons, everything, right? So just the other night, saw a raccoon, swear it weighed 40 pounds, and then uh, I, I caught eye shine on the camera, and because uh, I have a security camera that shines at my barn, you know, just for that exact reason, and I caught eye shine of a cat not two feet away from it, and I thought, oh, this is going to be bad, All right? The coon was so big that when it, it stood up on its back legs, like sat up, I honestly thought it was a bear cub, and then I'm like, no, wait, I don't think bears have babies in the fall. That doesn't make sense, you know, uh, like not cubs that size anyways. So I realized it was a raccoon and it could reach up and touch the man door handle of my barn. So, you know, first thing I do is start freaking out, right? Oh, Mr. Moon, get up! There's a coon you're trying to open the door! So I'm getting all wigged out. But I caught the glimpse of this cat just buggering off right quick. And I'm like, oh good, the cat got away. So, uh, anyways, Mr. Moon went and he scared the coon off and, you know, I set the live trap. But, unfortunately, this coon is way too big to get in the live trap. So, hopefully, he just disappears. He didn't find nothing to eat. But, uh, I've had a lot of these other cats that are coming around. With the weather getting colder, I put food out because we have a raven. So, I put food out for her, for Hope, all the time. And whatever she doesn't eat, usually these strays, you know, they'll come in and they'll eat it, which I don't mind because I'm surrounded by forests, so they're obviously not, you know, getting food anywhere else other than hunting. And when it gets cold like this, times are getting lean. So anyways, long story short, fed a couple cats, chased off a raccoon, heard the meow, meow, meow at the door. Now, I've noticed in the camera that there's a smaller cat out there. But I only get a, a glimpse of it on the camera, and it's it's at a distance, like way over where that pad is, that driveway pad. That's where I feed them over there, so it's right at the edge of the forest. So you don't really get to see the size. is hard to determine. I saw the big tomcat go by, and then this one followed, so I thought, okay, they're just out rutting and doing their thing. That's probably a female. So anyways, I felt bad for it because, you know, it's getting colder out. And, well, what if she's, you know, pregnant or what if she's got kittens or something? Maybe I can catch her and, you know, and get her into the shelter or something or what have you, right? <laughs> and you see this? He's literally climbing on me, right? This is, they love their mommy. So anyways, I hear all this meowing. I know I'm rambling, but I hear all this meowing at the door. 
And I know when I open up the door because it sticks at whatever's on the other side of the door. Well, I know it's a cat, but I know as soon as that door opens that it's probably going to bugger off. So I pull on the door and it goes, <laughs> you know, wood stick in the wood, right? And it didn't run. And it shocked me because it came in the door so fast into the garage. I'm like, what? What's going on? It never comes to me, right? You know, like none of the cats come to me. That takes like weeks of coaxing them and, you know, blackmailing them, bribing them, whatever, to try to get them to get in, you know, close enough to, to try to, you know, touch them or and calmly or catch them in the live trap or something. Nope, this little kitten six months old at least five six months old she's just tiny skinny as a carrot i mean she is so thin and uh she came right in and i'm like baby you know and she started rubbing around my legs and head butting me hard and she's purring but she's so skinny she's wet because of this fresh she, she showed up in the middle of a storm and she's all wet she's shivering I just ripped off my superhero house coat, you know, my pink one, right? Now you know why I, why I wear it all the time because it, it helps out a lot. <laughs> so I just ripped that thing right off, right? And I just put it around her, and as soon as I did, she just started purring. She let me pick her up. She only struggled for a few minutes, and then she just, just purring, just purring. So I came in the house, and I woke up Mr. Moon, and I said, That cat, that little cat, I said, It's a kitten. He's like, No. I'm like, Yeah, look. All right, and he's like, Holy jeez. And we noticed she had a collar on. Well, I don't have neighbors around here. Not very close. Well, I have neighbors, but they don't have a cat. And I don't know where this cat came from, except some scuzz bucket dropped it off my driveway, as per usual. This happens about once a year. And figured, oh, well, you know, Hammy will take care of it. Everybody knows in the neighborhood, right? I take in the strays all the time. I can't afford it. I really can't. But get the fly, baby. <laughs> There's a fly. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, some scuzz bucket dropped the cat off. Well, I got a couple things to say about that. And if they happen to be watching it, just, to, you know, maybe they know who I am because I don't know who they are. You're a scuzz bag. You are a low-life piece of shit. You really are. And the reason that I'm so mad, and yeah, I mean, I'm happy to I'm happy to take the baby in. No problem. You could have came to my door and asked me, you know, can you take this baby? I, I can't deal with it. It would have been, yeah, absolutely not a problem. Holy heck, even our vet recommends it to people that need to surrender an animal. We know a lady that will take it in and foster it until we can find it another home. You know, and what happens? I'm up to six cats now. I really am a cat lady. But the reason I'm calling you a piece of shit, and I hope that you actually see this video, because I'd like you to recognize this collar. You see this collar? This collar was on the cat. What pisses me off the most is it's not a stretch collar. It's not a quick release. It doesn't stretch. It doesn't pop open. If it got hung up on a branch, that cat's dead. It's a dog collar, okay? Now, there's more to it, folks. Stay tuned because my language is probably going to get really colorful. I think we're going to call this Swearing in the Woods with Hammy, episode 10, because <laughs> I do that a lot. So, when it's on the cat, I thought this, that looks like the clip. So, I am working hard to try to stretch this out so that I can get the collar off. Now, there's this chunk of hardware. And you got to remember, it's cold enough out there to snow. This brass is getting cold. There's a little thing right here to hang a tag off. That's getting cold. That digs in. There's this to hook a leash to. That's getting cold. Here's the clasp, and I couldn't see it because she was wiggling around so much. This is not quick release. This is like, it's practically rusted shut. Okay? So, what pissed me off is if you take this area right here and we pinch that out of the way, about that much of the collar was around her neck. That's how far I've had to stretch it. Roughly about that much. Take some. I couldn't get my finger in there, like, without pulling on it and... Like having her choking and wiggling to get away because just the, my finger trying to get in that collar 
So, the reason I say you're a piece of shit, one, you dropped off a six-month-old kitten who's never seen snow, doesn't know how to survive, doesn't know how to hunt and do everything. It doesn't just come to them instinctually, you know, until they are starving. That's just something people don't realize. They think, oh, they just do it naturally. No, when they hunt to eat, it's because they are starving. Two, you left the fucking collar on it. What if it did survive, okay? What happens when you eat? You get bigger. What happens when you eat good? You get fatter. What happens when your collar around your neck doesn't grow with you? You suffocate and strangle to death. That's why I'm pissed off. So if you recognize this collar, I got your cat. And you are not getting it back because you are an irresponsible piece of crap. It's mine now. Her name is Sweet Potato and she belongs to me. So, for you folks that think it's okay just to drop a cat off at the end of a driveway and the farmer will take care of it, just remember this before you open up that door and set it down in that driveway. One, there's a 90% chance that that little cat will starve to death. Two, take the collar off. Don't be a moron. How are they supposed to grow? You're choking them out. You're just choking them out. Slow. A slow, painful death from starvation and strangulation. And that makes you, you know what? You're not a piece of crap. You're a piece of shit. Completely, totally, utterly a piece of shit. You should not be responsible for the lives of animals. You should not be responsible for the lives of anything. Nothing. If you can't figure that out in your moronic brain, that as the cat grows, the collar doesn't, then you don't deserve to have a pet. You should not, you're not a responsible person. You're not. And if your cat, oh, my cat ran away. Well, um, that's not an excuse. I'm sorry, that's not an excuse. If your cat ran away in this area, I have a whole, whole page on Facebook that's dedicated to this community. You could put up a missing pet sign. You could contact people there. You could contact people all in the area. You didn't come to my door knock and ask me if I seen a cat. If one of my animals goes missing, I go everywhere to every door that I can get to. I make up flyers. I contact the SPCA. I, I, all the, all the buy and sell groups on Facebook. I advertise there any possible way that I can to find my pet. So don't say, oh, well, it run off because I'm not buying it. I think you threw it away and you didn't care. You didn't think, and you are a piece of shit. Now, grandma's not supposed to swear, but fuck that. You are going to get told off. You're a piece of shit. You are absolute garbage. And I hope one of your friends recognizes this caller and goes right to you and tells you straight out, there's a woman on YouTube just called you a piece of shit. And I'm keeping the cat. I'm paying the vet bills. So it's all good for me. Trick or treat. I got me a beautiful orange little carrot skinny cat in there. But I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that it survives. And I hope that karma comes back. Bites you hard right in the ass. I do. You deserve everything you get for being a low life. You are a low life scu scuzzball. So that's all I got to say folks. Um, scuzzball. I got a finger for you. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not your number one, trust me. You're not number one. So, if you're watching, okay, move along. We're done with you. I ain't got no use for you anyway, so I don't think anybody has. But to my wonderful viewers, thank you very, very much for letting me rant. And, you know, if you happen to know of somebody that is doing something just horrific like this, please contact your local SPCA, report them. It doesn't make you a rat or a stoolie. You're saving a life. If they were doing it to a child, you would definitely report them. Well, to me, the animals are my children. And I'm sure the animals are children to a lot of you. Because sometimes that's all we have left in our life. When we got empty nest syndrome, we just fill it up with furry babies instead. Because once a mama, always a mama. Once a grandma, always a grandma. But if you can be a mama and a grandma, you know, to furry little babies until your dying day, do it absolutely do it they make great companions they snuggle up with you you know they don't take a lot of work right you don't have to send them to college they wouldn't learn shit there anyways but <laughs> right you know stuff like that you don't have to buy them a car you know or a phone 
right? They're just happy just to sit there and snuggle up with you. Like just a minute ago, Dooley's happy to crawl up on my shoulder because there's a fly buzzing around in here. And if he gets a little height, maybe he can get it because he wants to protect mama from the bugs. So anyways, that's all I got to say. Be responsible with your pets. And I'm sure my, my viewers are. I'm pretty sure that y'all have the same kind of heart that I do. But these scuzzballs, they don't deserve, they don't deserve the happiness of, and the joy that a pet can bring them if they're not going to take care of them. So I'll let you know when I, I'm going to do a video. She's in quarantine right now um, because she is starving. Like she was so hungry that she almost ate the plate. Like she was just mowing down so fast. And I can't feed her a lot at once. And this is something you should know if you do find a starving pet, a starving animal, and you do rescue it. The, I know your first instinct is to feed it until it's full. You know, round belly, lots of milk and whatnot. One regular milk is not good for cats. Uh, if you can get goat milk, that's even better. But always, if, if milk is your only alternative, it's the only, like say you just got pasteurized milk or whatever, right? They're homogenized. Um, add water to it. Add warm, warm water. Not from the tap. Never give them warm water from the tap because inside your hot water tank, there's usually rust in the bottom. So you have to warm the water up in the stove or a kettle or microwave or something. Um, add a little bit of warm water to it and make it more water than milk they'll still get all nutrients from the milk but if it's the milk is too too thick um it really give them a digestive problem and they will literally get the shits uh, one sneeze and it just the power shits and we don't want that right because they're already suffering enough as it is so it's very hard for them to digest like raw milk well not raw milk but you know uh, our milk 2%, 1%, 2% homogenized, you know, whatever. Goat milk is, is definitely better. No almond milk, nothing like that. A lot of them have serious allergic re reactions. And Besides, I, I don't have the patience to milk an almond. <laughs> right? But you, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you could use canned milk too as long as it's not sweetened. Just water it right down because they need that calcium. Powdered milk even. Powdered milk works if they'll drink it, right? So I try to mix a little bit of um, powdered milk or um, my regular 2% in with, uh, if I give them chicken, I cook I cook all the meat. Always cook, Don't give them the raw meat when they're recovering. And you just feed them just like a spoonful, maybe a tablespoon at a time, teaspoon. It depends on how big they are. Um, I usually do about a tablespoon feeding of the wet cat food. And then at lunch, you know, about three hours later. I gave her like a, a tablespoon and a half of cooked chicken. It was baked, not fried. So I did that and I mixed up a little bit of powdered milk in it. I still have some uh, supplements here, but I don't want to give her any of that just yet until we get her back online eating. And the reason I say feed her, feed them small amounts several times during the day, no matter how, how much you see that they're just you know, and they just want it and they look so desperate. Um, that little bit that you give them is actually going to give them energy and they're going to start to recover. If you give them too much, their little bellies are shrunk and it depends on how long they have been starving. And if you feed them too much, then two things can happen. Uh, their belly could rupture and you don't want that because it's really hard to fix a baby's tummy if it's ruptured open in the condition that they're at and we don't want that so and two um they will eat so much that if there is something wrong with their bowels and that they won't be able to pass it you won't you won't know right they'll just swell up and then their bowels will get impacted so so yeah just little bits and put water in everything you know warm water in everything make it like a mash make it kind of soupy make them lap it instead of gulping it and biting it even if all you got is just wet cat food or dry cat food soak that in some warm water turn it into like a paste you know like a soup basically and let them eat that okay so that will definitely help keep them on and put them back online and then uh <laughs> she's sticking her paw she's in the bathroom um sticking her paw under the door but yeah, that'll definitely rehydrate them. And you have to do it gradual. Even though you just want to, you know, just feed them everything. Like give them a whole big plate, you know. No, you can't do that. I know your heart's in the right place. But that's actually going to do them more harm than good. And then, like I say, if you come across one, you know, 
try to try to take care of it if you can if you have the opportunity and the means to give that animal a home by golly do it it's very rewarding hide your breakables <laughs> hide all your wires <laughs> i don't care if you hide your wires under your carpets or put runners over the, the the wires extension cords and whatnot right you know just block it all off so you, you just baby proof and if you want to know if you've actually baby proofed the house crawl around i know this sounds this sounds just wild but crawl around on your hands and knees right floor height and look around and see what a puppy would see see what a, a kitten would see and if there's dangling cords you know get those up and out of the way because they make you know good little toys for the cat that's <laughs> so all they think but no might be attached to the end of an iron sitting up on a iron and board or your computer if you're a gamer <laughs> just don't let them near your computer <laughs> screw up your whole game just mess up your whole life for like a month <laughs> but yeah and like i say do the best that you can for them because there's nothing wrong with taking in a stray animal they don't have to be a pedigree they don't have to be any of that they're gonna love you no matter you know if they're purebred or not they're gonna love you and i'll tell you right now every animal that i've rescued loves me more and i mean shows me more affection and loves me more than any dog i bought a dog once and I've seen other people that buy the dog, but the strays that they brought in, it's because the stray is grateful. The stray knows that it was dying and that it met you and you saved its life. They're not stupid. They can think that way. You offered them food, warmth, shelter, love, pets, you know, all that, right? If they've had a hard life before you get them, they're really going to appreciate you after the fact. And that, that right there is a guarantee. And like I said, they're like my fur babies, you know. And I don't have to send them to college, buy them a phone or a bunch of games or <laughs> a car. <laughs> all right, folks, so that's all I got for you. And I will give you an update when she comes out of quarantine. So I just want to make sure if she's got any, you know, worms or anything like that, it doesn't get passed to my other cat. So that's what the supplement is for. Uh, it's, it's to help her get. It's a probiotic. So I have to give her a bit of the squirts to see. So I know it's TMI. Well, it's part of it, all right? Because those those worms, the worms can kill them too. So because they get like that long, long skinny, look like spaghetti, right? So and it just takes all the nutrients out of the food, and they get nothing from it. So they're just the host, right? So, but yeah, if you find an animal, please love it. It's Halloween. It's not true that black cats are bad luck. I don't believe that. But on Halloween, please do me a favor and your pets a favor. Keep your animals inside Halloween night because there are some freaks and weirdos out there that that's what they do Halloween. They go around and they hurt people's pets because it's some kind of, you know, so I want to say it out loud, but it's some people take Halloween completely different, you know, and they hurt other people's animals because that's how they get their kicks. So yeah, just keep your pets in on Halloween night and, and besides a lot of puppies, <laughs> big puppies, you know, a hundred pound pitters and <laughs> dobies and Rottweilers, they're not used to seeing people show up looking all weird. The dogs can see, right? So if they show up looking weird at your door and keep showing up, your animals are going to freak out. So I used to just keep my dogs in another room and uh, I left the door open so that they didn't ring the doorbell because that'll drive you right around the bend. <laughs> 100 kids showing up, ding dong. <laughs> yeah, trust me, just sit in a chair by the door and move the TV so you can still watch TV and when you see the kids just open the door. <laughs> Especially if you have a little baby and trying to keep the baby quiet, keep the baby to sleep. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, anyways, I got to go. I'm going to go and make her some more. It's getting near that time again. I don't know. Let me check my watch. <laughs> That's my watch. All right. It's 20 to 4. All right. God bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you. All these little fur babies that you help love you. And y'all have yourself a good day. Except you, you scuzzballs. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you never, ever, ever experience the love and the joy of having a pet and then abuse them. You don't deserve their love and aff affection and attention. You really don't. You're a low-life piece of crap. All right. Not my subscribers. You guys are awesome. I love my subscribers. Just jerk off whoever dropped this baby out there. So, with this on. 
anyways okay everybody stay happy and do what you can and if you don't want to adopt a pet you know and bring one in you can always donate to your local shelter and it would help the shelter definitely it would help them so much in case people like me you know have to bring in strays that i can't afford to keep i already have six cats i can't take in anymore i got six cats i got 11 chickens now my flock has dwindled because they was old and i have a goat angelina i, I can't take in anymore i don't have an income <laughs> I work hand to mouth and live off my husband's pension, but I'm still doing the best I can. So, yeah, if you can, you know, help at your local shelter, please do. All right. For a Halloween gift or something, donate some money instead of giving kids, you know, rotten teeth. All right. All right. God bless you all. I hope you have a great week and uh, I'll be seeing you soon. I got another video out about a bunch of stuff from Timu and you should see my new curtains. It looks like I'm sitting outside and I don't have to look at the white crap out there this year. Not diggity. I'm still wearing my pajamas, though. I don't care. You can't get me out of my pajamas. All right. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Bye.